Hey guys, Dykate here. So this is the first installment in a new little series I'm going to try and do called LMW Retrospectives, where I just recount from my personal perspective the lost media searches that I've been involved in. I chose today's topic for the first episode as I feel that we are hot on the heels of finding it at this point, but just now really need to focus on spreading the word and making as many people aware of this thing as we can. And that thing is the Pinwheel Clockman short. It was in mid to late 2013 that I first heard of the Pinwheel Clockman short and the search effort for it that had kicked off a year earlier, but that had sort of petered out uh, by that time. Funnily enough, this one came onto my radar not long before the Crackmaster search came to an end, which this search uh, almost feels to me like, for lack of a better phrase, a spiritual successor to the Crackmaster search. You know, creepy kids cartoon, barely anyone remembers it, people think it's fake, but it ends up being real and surfacing. Or at least that's how I'm hoping this one ends up going down. Uh, but having said that, I'm of the utmost confidence that it is real. And I'm really hoping that this video helps to dispel uh, the doubt that I know a lot of people out there have in terms of whether this thing actually exists or is just another creepypasta or something like that. Before I go any further, let me just backtrack somewhat, just for those who are unfamiliar, uh, back to the post that started it all in 2012 on Bungie.net's off-topic board, The Flood. A user by the name of Commander Santa, in early 2012, posted a thread on the flood about an animated short he had seen on Nickelodeon's pinwheel as a child. He described the short as featuring a young boy in bed late at night. As the wall clock above his head strikes midnight, a discoloured man emerges from it and snatches the boy away, taking him, via some sort of elevator, on a terrifying adventure before returning him home. Despite only having this short description and a small comic strip rendition by Santa, the search caught on pretty quickly, and it didn't take long for word of the Clockman to spread to other online communities. Anyway, cut to January of 2014. The Crackmaster search, and many months of intense detective work, had come to an end for me, and I really began setting my sights on the Clockman short, at which point I wrote an article for it on the Lost Media Wiki. In the year that followed, I attempted to contact various outlets, like Nickelodeon and TV stations that had aired Pinwheel, in the hopes of finding more info on the Clockman, but had no success, often putting the search to the side due to just the sheer lack of information and the crushing disappointment that that can bring, which is something that I was, you know, very familiar with coming off of the back of the Crackmaster search. Now, by this point, as I mentioned earlier, the initial search for Clockman had pretty much petered out, though there still remained leads that had not been contacted, most notably of all, a man named Michael W. Howe. Now, a decade earlier, in 2004, in an AnimationNation.com forum thread on scary animations, said forums now being accessible only via the Wayback Machine, the aforementioned Michael W. Howe described a short uncannily similar to that of Santa's Clockman description, with a few notable differences. In Michael's version, the protagonist is a girl, who was given a pair of red shoes by her mother and told not to lose them. She inevitably does lose them, however, and decides to ask a local wizard for help. He helps her retrieve her shoes on the condition that she tell her mother the truth that she had originally lost them. She neglects to tell this to her mother though, and the wizard is shown appearing in various floors of the girl's house as eerie music plays. He emerges from the wall clock above her bed and takes her away, demanding to know why she didn't keep her end of the deal. To make up for this, she ends up sewing stars into the night sky before being returned home. On the surface, these descriptions are actually quite different, but both contain one very crucial thing which is, of course, the man coming out of the clock. Now, upon first reading Michael W. Howe's uh, post, it became clear to me that there was some short out there, where a man eerily comes out of a clock and steals a child away. Whether or not Santa's recollection of events was 100% accurate, uh, these posts were made almost a decade apart, as I said. So it was just so apparent to me that this wasn't some quick creepypasta someone had just whipped up on a whim. So I hear you ask, what makes people so sure that this is nothing more than a creepypasta? Here's the thing. Commander Santa made an update to his original thread at one point, alluding to the notion that Pinwheel used to hypnotise children, and that the Clockman may have been a false memory as a result of that. The thing is though, I've asked Commander Santa personally about this, and he has confirmed that it was nothing more than him having a bit of fun. Probably not the best time or place for it, but what are you going to do? Another reason for the doubt was Commander Santa's sudden departure from the Flood. As it turns out, he had, in his own words, banished himself from the forums until such a time that the short was unearthed, in a sort of show of commitment. This made things evidently more difficult for me in terms of tracking him down, but I was able to get onto him via Nintendo Age in early 2015. We passed various bits of info back and forth, 
But in the end, we didn't really have anything new to go on, so I decided that I would try and contact uh, Michael W. Howe. I was successful in tracking down who I had deduced to be him, and I would later find out that it was indeed him, though every time I tried to contact him either via Facebook or his blog, his blog, by the way, is uh, called The Entertainment Nut. Go check it out, it's good stuff. But uh, yeah, when I initially tried reaching out, he didn't respond. Uh, now, fast forward to September of 2015, and I have just released Rhapsody Street Kids for Found Media Week. I thought it would be fun to just Google Rhapsody Street Kids and see if there were any new, like, reviews of it or anything that had gone up since I posted it. And the most amazing thing happened. I came across a 2011 blog post on the film that I had come across earlier in my searches, but it was only then that I made the profound realisation that the person who had posted about it was none other than Michael W. Howe at The Entertainment Nut. So I posted a link to the upload on said page and he promptly responded, curious as to how I got it. But uh, that's a story for another time. Anyway, I told him he could email me about it and that I also had something I wanted to ask him about Pinwheel. He emailed me shortly thereafter and, to my delight, knew straight away which Pinwheel short I was referring to. I guess he'd been asked about it before because Commander Santa had modified his 2012 flood post to include Michael's description as a likely contender. He also confirmed that he hadn't responded to my original reach out posts uh, because he didn't recognise me and hey, fair enough, there's a lot of crap on the internet so I don't really blame him. So Michael was very kind and went on to give me the most comprehensive in-depth rundown of the short to date, which I will now read verbatim. Yes, the Clockman comic is similar to one scene in the cartoon. The show starts with a girl getting a new pair of shoes from her mother, who cautions her not to lose them. The girl wanders off a ways to play, but upon planning to return home, she finds she can't find her shoes. After looking everywhere for them, she remembers there's a wizard nearby who might help her. The strange thing is we see the wizard appearing and disappearing in trees and in various areas around his home. The girl asks the wizard for help and he gives her replacement shoes, but tells her that she needs to tell her mother what happened. However, the girl goes home and doesn't. During the episode, a female narrator can be heard. I still remember her going, she felt that the wizard would forget their deal. The scene then changes back to the wizard's abode with him looking a little upset. The scene then cuts to inside the girl's house, wherein she's in bed with a pendulum clock near her bed, as the narrator whispers in an eerie way, but the wizard did not forget. We then see two floors of the house, with the wizard appearing and disappearing several times, first on the first floor, then on the second, then outside her door. She scaredly hides under the covers and then the pendulum stops, and a window forms on the clock, out of which the wizard appears and takes her to his place, where he demands to know why she did not tell her mother the truth. The girl claims she was afraid of what her mother would say if she told her she lost the shoes. The wizard said something and there were buildings that turned into skyscrapers. My scant memory is that he said he used his magic to make tall buildings, but don't quote me on that. He then is willing to forgive her if she'll knit stars to place in the sky. She does so and he returns her home. The next day she tells her mother what happened and instead of her mother calling the police to arrest the wizard, the mother forgives the daughter and all is well. We also see the wizard watching them through a telescope, smiling. That's about 90% of what I remember from the segment. It definitely was one of a few that had a creepy vibe on Pinwheel. I recall another about this girl in an eerie house who would hear strange noises but her parents didn't believe her. I once found the book it was based on in my elementary school library when I was seven, but don't recall that one's title. I probably saw it quite a few times growing up. I still watched Pinwheel up until Nick took it off. Unfortunately, I just have my memories of the episode. I recall it almost moved like it was stop motion paper animation, like they laid the characters on the backgrounds and moved them around. I want to say maybe around the time I was five to seven years old. So yeah, that was the extent of uh, Michael's rundown, but it's very extensive. Now, as Michael was born in 1980, uh, this places his recollection of the short airing between 1985 and 1987. With this new information in hand and my enthusiasm for the search rejuvenated, I decided to send the rundown to Commander Santa, who confirmed that it was indeed one and the same as the Clockman short he had originally described, but that he must have misremembered certain parts of it. Now that we had a solid in-depth description to go off, I decided to reach out once again to people involved with the making and airing of Pinwheel. This time, however, I decided to contact the creators individually, rather than the studio that produced it and the stations that aired it. And I was almost immediately successful. Uh, a very kind man by the name of Michael Karp, who worked as a writer, director and voice actor on Pinwheel, responded to a message I left on his Stage 32 page. He went on to say the following. 
Oddly enough, I have a very vague memory of the short you describe. Snatches of memory of the wizard appearing and disappearing especially. I'm thinking that the film was purchased for the first season of Pinwheel, 1980-81. I wrote for the second season, 81-82, and stayed on to direct and provide voiceovers for several of the foreign series for that second season. The woman who would know is the executive producer of Pinwheel, a woman by the name of Tippy Fortune, one of the best producers of that time certainly, and a wonderful woman personally. Michael then went on to tell me that he had had correspondence with Tippy some years ago via email and that he may be able to get me in touch with her. Shortly after that, he followed through with Tippy's email address, who I forwarded the info on to. Tippy Fortune, aka Lois Fortune, executive producer on the show, was also very kind and promptly responded with the following. Well, you are quite the sleuth. It is gratifying to know that Pinwheel and its films are fondly remembered. I can't say that I recall the film of which you wrote. However, I will tell you what I do know. Most of our films were acquired from Co Films Incorporated. Co Films had a library of shorts from around the world, the UK, Scandinavia, and Eastern Europe, and a thriving business selling to various cable companies, such as HBO for their interstitial programming. As companies began producing their own material, acquisitions fell off. Therefore, when Bernice Co was ready to sell her business, there were no buyers. It is my understanding that Co is no longer in business. I googled her name and company to no avail. I couldn't locate her associate, Min Levy, either. Hopefully, her library exists somewhere. Colleagues who were intimately involved with Pinwheel's acquisition slash programming slash editing are BCC on this message. If they have additional information, they will either get in touch with you directly or give me the information, which I gladly will relay to you. In addition, I am including info re children's media organizations. Because of their worldwide vision and connections, they may recognize the film you seek and point you in the right direction. This is the American Center for Children and Media in Chicago and the Play Collective in New York. I'm also copying the gentleman who has successfully shepherded these two organizations above and whose international contacts may be an asset to you. I will leave it to him to contact you. Now, I did manage to get in touch with one of those organizations, but uh, they were unable to help me, sadly. Other Pinwheel staff members that I contacted were James Colistro, who sadly didn't reply, and also Lewis Phillips, or Louis Phillips, and Bob Perlman, who were also both kind enough to reply but sadly weren't really able to provide me with anything I hadn't already found out via Michael and Tippy. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. Uh, I've posted more or less all of the info I currently have on hand in a thread on the LMW forums if you wanted to check that out and or participate in the discussion. I'm now convinced that the key lead in getting this is Co Films. Sadly, Bernice Co passed away in 2001. Though I was able to find the contact information of her daughter Jane, who I emailed about the search a few months back, with all the information currently at my disposal. She replied favourably and sounded enthusiastic about helping, but sadly, as of this recording, she hasn't sent me any follow-up emails. Though I did send one a few weeks back just in case my previous one went into her spam folder or something, so I'm really hoping that something comes of that. Either that or people with old recordings of Pinwheel, I think is going to be the way that we get this, if we get this. My friend Bedhead Bernie and I have scoured through and catalogued every morsel of online pinwheel footage we could get our hands on, but sadly the Clockman was nowhere to be found. If you know anyone who might know anything about where to find Clockman, anything at all, maybe you know someone who collects VHS tapes that might have recorded some pinwheel, or maybe you know someone who works at Nickelodeon, anything like that, please pass this information on. Also please refrain from contacting anyone that I've already contacted about this. The last thing I want to do is inundate them with emails. So Jane Co, Tippy Fortune, all the names that I've mentioned here have already A, given all the info they have, or B, not yet responded, in which case I feel it's best to just wait it out, be patient, and see what happens. Now, speaking of Bedhead Bernie, why don't you go and check out his Animation Warehouse episode on Clockman, also released today, where he covers the short in a much more historic and concise manner, as opposed to having to wade through the long-winded ramblings of a madman like myself. This has been an LMW retrospective. If you enjoyed it, please do give the video a like and or consider subscribing for future LMW retrospectives. Next time, I'll finally be spilling the beans on how I got Rhapsody Street Kids, so keep an eye out for that. I'm Dykate, hope to catch you then. What the hell?